There are three fundamental questions that every human being should ask. Who am I? Why am I here? And how do I achieve my purpose in life? Who am I? Why am I here? And how do I achieve my purpose? Why was I sent here? And how do I fulfill my mission here on earth? There are key decisions that we make in our life. As children, as children, the very first decision that a child makes on his or her own, and maybe with some guidance from the parents, is what subjects do we choose in school. At the primary level, they write examinations, and then within the second and third form in secondary school, they choose. They have to make choices among a variety of subjects. Do I choose sciences? Do I choose the arts? Do I choose accounting? Do I choose human humanitarian field? And like this, these key decisions are made at the secondary school level. But a little later on in life, when our children are now available and we are now available to the job market, we have other choices to make. And these choices are, should I work in the engineering field? Should I be engaged in trade? Or should I be a social worker? What are the choices that we make in deciding how we earn and eke out a living? These choices, unfortunately for many of us, are made for us. Many of us today, and there are many thousands of people today who are frustrated with their day-to-day -day jobs. There are many people who are unhappy. Scientifically, we're told that the highest number of heart attacks that occur, they happen on a Monday morning between 6 and 9 a.m. And what's the correlation? It is when people are waking up and preparing themselves to start work in that particular week. Many people are unhappy. They are so distressed about the thought of going to their current day jobs, or night jobs as the case may be. Most of us, these decisions are made for us. We end up with particular subjects. We end up getting or accepting the first job that comes our way. And we remain with that out of loyalty or otherwise. We remain with those jobs for many, many years. Do you believe that you came here to fulfill your purpose in life? Do you believe that you are here for a reason? Do you believe that there is some mission that you came into this world to achieve before you bid farewell to your loved ones. Can you at this stage in your life, whether you're a young child, whether you're a teenager, a young adult, or an aging person who would have probably, probably been approaching retirement or post-retirement, so to speak, are you sure what is your purpose here on earth? Have you ever asked yourself this question? Why am I here? Why am I going through the routines of life? Is it to go and work 8 hours or 12 hours a day or 40 hours a week or 172 hours a month? What really is the purpose? Is it just to buy groceries? Is it to send my children to school? Is it to provide for the home? What really is my purpose here? It must be more than just to eat, sleep and procreate. Our mission here, our purpose here has to be more than these. I was looking at an interview with Will Smith. Everybody knows Will Smith today. Popular American actor. And the person who was interviewing him said to him, Smith, Mr. Smith, how proud you must be to be known as a legend, an icon in today's not just film industry, but worldwide. And it was coincidentally interview, an interview for the film, I Am Legend. You are a legend. You are an icon. How do you feel when you, when you have started out in the film industry and now having established yourself as a legend, a true legend and an icon, how do you feel? And I was blown away expecting a very Western answer from a very popular actor, a Western actor. And you know what was his response? He said, I don't see myself as an icon, nor do I see myself as a legend. He says, I see myself 
as leaving behind an idea. How powerful it is. He said, I see myself as leaving behind an idea. And what is that idea? That idea is that my life should be such that it shows every human being that life is filled with infinite possibilities. He says, my life should be testimony that there is magic in this world. Meaning that we can create whatever we want. And he, had, he made the analogy of Paolo Coelho's book, The Alchemist. For those of you who haven't read that book before, make a conscious decision to go out and buy this book. It's called The Alchemist. Do you know what an alchemist is? An alchemist is one in the myth mythology of the ancient times. An alchemist is someone who takes lead. You know what is lead? The metal lead. It is very cheap and very available material. And the alchemist is one who would transform lead into gold by just touching it. And he says, I am like that alchemist in my life, not in chance forming lead into gold, but rather transforming my life, transforming my life into a state where I find out that there are no coincidences. That is what I want to leave behind, an idea that life is filled with infinite possibilities, that life can, you can be the magician, the alchemist in your life, where you transform the mundane existence to one where we recognize that there are no coincidences in my life. And I thought, wow, what a powerful statement. Dr. Deepak Chopra and Dr. Wayne Dyer, in their messages, they spoke at length on a subject called synchronicity or serendipity. Have you seen the movie Serendipity, Sarah? Very, very nice movie. It talks about looking at the co what seems to be coincidences in our life. There are actually no coincidences in our life. And once we recognize that every single thing that happens to us, whether it's something that we celebrate or something that we feel frustrated about, it is all part of helping us define our purpose in life. You would say, Bob, why did God send me into this world to suffer? In the Upanishads, in the Vedas, and Deuteronomy in the Holy Bible, all these scriptures talk about God sending, here, sending us here with a certain gift, with a certain mission. He planted us, planted that mission, that gift inside of us before He sent us into this world. Patanjali, in Patanjali Yuga Sutra, he spoke about a word, and that word was, the great masters of the past achieved the highest state of existence. Why? Because they were inspired. They lived a life that was in spirit. You see, when you live a life that is connected, serendipity and synchronicity means being connected to your source. Who is your source? You can call your source Shiva. You can call your source Krishna. You can call your source Sai, Jesus, Buddha, Allah. It matters not who or how you define or you label your source. The source that we, we refer to, it is consistent, it is common, and it is equally available to all. And we're told that once we are connected, our purpose in life it is to connect to that source. And when we connect to that source, we recognize that there are no coincidences. Coincidences. We recognize that we live a life that is in spirit. I would have said this to you before, but do you know that you have a talent? A talent that is more developed in you than anyone else in this world. Do you believe that? Believe? Do you believe that you have a talent for you? That is more developed in you than anyone else in this world? Maybe. I ask you the question. Chabina, do you believe that you have a talent, a gift from God that is more developed in you than anyone else? And he says yes. Many of us go through our lives, not sure, still contemplating what that gift is.